Nostalgia Critic guy remembered so you don't have to. The new Looney Tunes show, good or bad? There's been a lot of variations of the classic Looney Tunes characters over the years, but this latest reincarnation has caused the most controversy. And when I say controversy, I mean geeks complaining about on message boards. There's probably people out there that actually make videos about it. <laughs> With that said, this rendition seems to have the most audiences split. The reason mostly centering around the Looney Tunes being domesticated. They're not loony anymore, some say. It's mostly dialogue with not enough slapstick and too many changes made to the Looney Tunes personas. Being a diehard Looney Tunes fan myself, I felt it only fair to throw in my two cents. And in my opinion, I think it's funny. Undeniably flawed, but still very funny. I personally enjoy it because the focus is kept on what made the Looney Tunes hilarious to begin with, the Looney Tunes personalities. People forget that a lot of the Looney Tunes cartoons didn't have as much slapstick as you would think. It actually was a lot of talking. Take the most famous examples with Elmer, Bugs, and Daffy. Most of it technically is just standing around discussing who the slapstick should happen to. And only once in a while did the slapstick actually happen. This is why many say the Warner Brothers cartoons were more adult humor, where Disney cartoons were more childish humor. Theirs definitely had more motion and action, but focused less on developing the jokes. Now keep in mind also that these original cartoons were usually about seven minutes long. TV shows nowadays are at least triple that time, so everything has to be expanded, including the dialogue. And with that said, the slapstick is still there. It just has to be proportionate to the time given or else it'll be overused. But that's not the only complaint. Another one is that they're too domesticated. Bugs and Daffy live in suburbia and focus more on the problems that a Seinfeld episode would focus on rather than a Looney Tunes short. Well, in many respects, I think Seinfeld is kind of similar to Looney Tunes. Isn't Jerry very similar to Bugs, or George very similar to Daffy? Even the visual humor and harebrained schemes of Kramer seem very similar to the Coyote, so I think it's a very welcomed comparison. And in many respects, Looney Tunes actually has a bigger advantage because it's animated. Therefore, it can go even further with its humor. For example, there's an episode where Lola invites Bugs to be in her family portrait. But when Bugs chips a tooth, she wants to selfishly leave him out despite Bugs being more determined than ever to now want to be in it, just out of spite. Now that's very Seinfeld. But the fact that they go so far as to have a car chase with a coach and carriage, an explosion, and a fall off a cliff resulting in all of them getting a chipped tooth for the portrait, that's Looney Tunes. So in many respects, it is a similar setup, but they can have even more fun and creativity with their jokes. Because, simply put, there's no boundaries. I guess another reason it works for me is because I believe that, while truly great characters don't change over time, environments do. And if Looney Tunes still wants to speak to both an adult and a kid audience, the characters can stay the same, but it has to evolve with the rest of the world. Changes have to be made. And I think many of us know how most people react to change nowadays. I don't want change! I don't want change! Everything has to stay the same! But as long as the environments create comedic possibilities for their personalities to work off of, I'm all for it. It's true some of the characters have been changed around, but again, I think it's for the better. Bugs is just as much the everyman now as he was in the past because the show acknowledges people's weaknesses of modern day and their clever solutions of modern day. By having him more fragile and actually able to lose, it makes him more identifiable, as well as much more appreciative when he actually does win. If he always won, it would become boring. Even the original cartoons had to mix it up once in a while, and Bugs always had to show some weakness as he had to get into a predicament that he had to get out of. Thus, we're all the more interested in how he'll use his cool and wit to deal with the situation, when we know it can just as easily backfire. Daffy is still just as selfish and diabolical as ever, Porky still seems to be the optimistic pawn in everybody's plan, and then we have Lola. Oh Jesus, sweet hippity hoppity Christ, thank you for Lola! This has literally gone from one of my most despised Looney Tune characters into one of my favorites. That's Kristen Wiig of Bridesmaids fame doing the voice, and they transformed her from a bland, sexualized token chick into a crazy, absent-minded, often unfocused goofball, living only in the bubbly madness of her mind. And I know some of you are thinking, oh, but that's not the original Lola character. Cause oh yeah, there was a ton to work with, like bunny that she didn't like to be called doll. Don't need more than that! Yeah, her looniness, if any, came from how other people reacted to the character, not from the character herself. It was them going, ooh, she's sexualized, and that's it. 
This is an actual personality that can work off of the other personalities in the show. They also do well at balancing out other characters so that they can still seem likable. Half of what Daffy gets away with is helped by the fact that he has a no-nonsense girlfriend named Tina, who constantly keeps him in check. She's not as goofy as the other characters, but she still has a definite personality, and is meant to be more grounded similar to how a character like Porky is. But now with that said, there are some changes that inevitably I'm not going to agree with either. Like making the Tasmanian Devil their dog is kind of lame, especially when I think there actually could be some real comedic possibilities from him. Witch Hazel being a sassy black woman is really odd. Come on, she was fine the way she was. <laughs> and those little music videos in between, while funny sometimes, can get a little too repetitive. I'm glad they only do them now when they feel like it and don't force themselves to do one every episode. But let's get down to the final major complaint, when the jokes just aren't funny. Yeah, that can be a major problem. Now, as I said before, I think most of the jokes in the show work. But when they die, man, they really die. Like, they have a lot of good writers working on it, and then, like, maybe one who just keeps throwing in terrible jokes. There's also some times where the stories are so ingeniously tied together, but then they never add up to a strong payoff. There's an episode, for example, dealing with father figures. Three separate stories are going on that actually all come together in the very end. And it hilariously just keeps building and building. You think it's going to work its way up to a big climax. But instead, it's just sort of a weak bit of slapstick, and that's it. So in a sense, when people say they don't like the show, I know where they're coming from. There are times where the show really loses focus. It's really tough to stomach, and I'm not going to pretend like it's not. But when it hits bullseyes, I truly feel it captures the spirit of the Looney Tunes almost as much as the original. Because it puts the same recognizable characters in brand new scenarios that makes way for brand new possibilities. And that's what the Looney Tunes always were to me. And the reason I get so confused about some fans shouting sellout is that they never seem to get angry at the past obvious sellouts. So, let me get this straight, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny! Three little maids from school, are we? Part of the school girl well can be. <laughs> That's funny! She's fly! What's that mean? That she's lighter than air. <laughs> That's funny! <laughs> that time I did hit an oil track. Bye! I'll get through this. I know, I've been there. But I'm not there anymore! Woo! See what happens when you people don't let me read your mail? The Looney Tunes are dead. I'm sorry, Warner Brothers, you flew too close to the sun. Some renditions I didn't include because they got the proper response they deserved. Lunatics Unleashed was despised and back in action got an overwhelming reaction of... <laughs> but people still seem split about the new animated series. Die Hard Split. If you don't like it because you feel there aren't enough funny jokes and sometimes it goes a little too far or not far enough, I understand and completely sympathize with your judgment. But if you're just gonna hate because something is different, I kindly ask that you go to that corner of the internet that remembers your utopian time period that never existed. And if you're like me, where you see both the good and the bad with the show, allow me to point out the top 10 best episodes so you can avoid the duds. Father figures. Lola's father wants to connect to the closest thing to a son he's ever had. It's funny, clever, and even touching at times. Even if its ending is underwhelming. To bowl or not to bowl? Daffy joins a bowling team but has to be told that he's the only bad player in the middle of the big tournament. This ending will have you laughing for hours. Eligible Bachelors. Bugs and Lola take a tour to France while Granny gives a tour to Force, with a story about how she was a kick spy in World War II. That's actually kind of gripping at times. The Float. This might be Daffy at his cruelest, and it's fascinating to see just how despicable we can take this character before we want to kill him. Some might see it as going too far, but I think it's pretty funny. Members Only. The first appearance of Lola adds the perfect introduction. Again, has sort of a weak ending, but it's still a Lola-centered episode, and to me, those rarely fail. Double Date. Daffy wants to impress his new girlfriend, Tina, so he asks Lola for advice, not realizing Lola falls for her own techniques and becomes obsessed with Daffy herself. Another great stalker episode from our favorite crazy. You've got hate mail. Daffy learns from Tina that he can let out steam by writing an angry email and then deleting it. So Daffy writes an angry email to everybody he knows, but accidentally sends it out. The reactions are mostly what you think. This one has lots of laughs, a surprisingly warm ending, and maybe the funniest design of Yosemite Sam you'll ever see. I won't ruin it for you here, but it's worth checking out. 
Rebel without a glove. Bugs loses his trademark glove, so he wears a pair of biker gloves instead, altering his entire personality as well as scaring the out of the people around him. This is not only as funny as it sounds, but we also get some fascinating insight into Daffy's psyche. For example, what is the story with that white thing on his neck? Again, I won't give away the answer. The DMV. What can I say? They do every hilarious joke you could do with these characters being at the most miserable place on Earth. The comedy writes itself and most of them hit head on. And my personal favorite episode is one called Customer Service. This plays into our fears that a customer service agent played by a devilishly evil Cecil Turtle are actually sadists who love to torture their clients by putting them on hold or somehow creating more problems. It's a return to form for Bugs as he dons disguises and plans diabolical schemes all in the name of sweet revenge. The jokes are funny, the setup is great, the subplot's entertaining, they all tie together, and it's a perfect mix of the Looney Tunes combined with modern day problems. But what the do I know? Check out the show and see for yourself. Check it out, pick a side, and see what you've been missing, or glad you've been missing. I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy, remember, so you don't have to.